Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. I'm going to show you how I condition my plate. And since I've been printing a lot, uh, almost every week, I need to condition the plate with baby oil. And this is how I do it. Uh, this is a very inexpensive baby oil that I got from a discount store. And um, I just spread it on the plate like so. Now I, I like using my hands because I can get it into all the Uh, nooks and crannies, if you can call it. So I just press it into the plate, like so. I put a good amount. Okay. Then I let it sit for a few minutes and the good thing about uh, the oil it's good for your skin as well and uh, let this sit because as you've noticed the uh, jelly plate is actually made of oil uh, whenever you put a piece of cardboard or piece of paper on on the surface after a few minutes you'll see an oil stain which means that the plate itself is made of oil and it needs to be replenished uh, depending on how often you use your plate and like a person like uh, myself I use it quite a bit, so I find that it's necessary to keep your plate well oiled and conditioned. What it does, it avoids uh, tearing when you're pulling a print, and it just keeps the plate supple and keeps it in good shape. So it's been a few minutes, I'm going to Use uh, this is a microfiber rag, and I don't like using paper towels because they uh, they shed, they spread a lot of lint. Uh, microfiber is good because it doesn't leave any uh, lint residue. You can find microfiber uh, in any discount store these days. So I just carefully skim my rag. In fact, the uh, printing table benefits from a little bit of oiling too. And then um, I'll let this dry for like uh, maybe 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And as you can see, it's good for your hands. Keeps them moist. So that is the maintenance part of this video. I hope you uh, do this for your plates and keep them happy. So I'll be right back. Okay, now that the plate has been conditioned with oil, I'm going to apply some uh, Blicrylic Black with my brush. Uh, I'm hoping that the oil is going to create some textures when I paint this on, 
kind of like a resist. I'm going to try a different width of brush. So this will be like a study on lines. And as you can see, the, uh, the oil content causes the paint to uh, have some textures. Kind of like a resist. So that's a medium brush. Now this is the thinnest brush. Okay, so this is the first layer of uh, making marks and I will air dry this uh, in order to uh, get a second layer of paint on top. So I'm going to use my um, uh, desk fan. And hopefully that will speed things up. So I will be right back. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes or so. And I have assembled some Lucas Beige, some Blicrylic Raw Sienna, and some Artist Love Raw Sienna. So if you notice the different brands have different versions of the same name. So you really cannot go by the title or the name of the color. You really have to go by color swatches. So I will start with the lighter color. This is beige. So I want a series of vertical stripes. And here is raw sienna. and some artist law raw sienna that will provide a little bit of variation of 
tones. So I will start with the beige color. Gradually blending to Now I'm going to take a viewer's advice and discharge the excess. Okay. Let me just clear the deck. Um, this is not a very big table, so it's easy for things to get in the way. Now because I'm trying to pick up the first layer of marks, I'm pressing very hard. Hopefully the uh, combination of the recent oil treatment and the very heavy pressure of my hand is going to force all of the marks to transfer. Okay, let's see what we got. I think it's a pretty interesting transfer. Now oiling the plate does pay off. Uh, actually, I'm going to do a close up so you can see in real time what the texture is like. I think this is what many artists refer to as a grunge look. going real slow because I don't want this to tear. Okay. 
it's interesting how some of the dry paint forms uh, like a skin. the result it's very calligraphic pretty cool huh so these marks even if I did plan it in a way the result is mostly accidental so this gets air dried I will see what I can do about the ghost print so don't go away I'm going to try to retrieve the ghost print with some green oxide and some metallic teal so let's see how this goes Again, I will apply some marks. Now for this second pull, I will leave this for about 10 minutes. I'm going to take the chance. I want as much of the remaining paint to transfer.
I know there's a risk of tearing, but I'm gonna give it a try. Let's see what we got. The uh, scribbles transferred well. And the rest of the uh, black transferred as well. The uh, metallic teal gives it a lot of shine. So I'm, I'm not going to put this down on the plate because there's still some leftovers. So this gets air dried as well. Now for this last pull, maybe I will try some Azo Orange. And some Copper. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to try using my extra wide rear. Using the uh, the heel of my brayer to make some marks. I have considered using a Baron because uh, 
when you're doing larger prints, it can get a little tiring. Um, I'll give it a try. Another thought I had was to use those uh, heavy rolling pins used for baking bread. Uh, I'll do an experiment one time and see if there's any benefit. Okay, let's see what we got. Please do not tear on me. I think this is pretty cool transfer. getting the hang of this. This is really cool too. Very nice texture. It's an overall texture. You can hardly see the uh, remnants of the uh, first uh, black marks, the circles and curved lines, but they're still there. Okay. Let me try one last time. <coughs> Using this is almost gone. <coughs> Making nasty noises too. Let me try this cadmium yellow. This is also at the end. All right, I'm trying not to put too much. Now this last sheet of paper is not Arnhem, this is Stonehenge. I think uh, I used up 
my last sheet of Arnhem. Now this is uh, a different paper made by Legion and it has a smoother, almost like a Bristol kind of finish. And it's a little heavier, not much, but it has a little more body. It's a very good paper. I've been using this for a very long time and it's not that expensive if you compare it to the European papers. So I'm going to start using Stonehenge paper from now on because I uh, have used up all my Arnhem 1618. Okay. Now I will leave this for another 10 minutes. Okay, let's see what we got. Hopefully this will not tear. Pretty cool result, I can tell already. Check this out. So it's been a really good series of ghost prints. I think the secret is not putting too much paint when you want to pull the uh, leftover paint up. So uh, this gets air dried and then I will be back in a few minutes and recap. Now my curiosity got the best of me and I couldn't resist doing this just to peek underneath. But that's what the ghost print will look like if I pull the whole thing off. So I can't pass up this opportunity so I am going to use I think I've used this up you know what they say good to the last drop Now since the uh, beige is very watery, 
because I'm trying to make use of it. It's going to create some additional texture. So let me just soak this. Okay, here's the exciting part. Well, not, not all of it transferred, but the effect is very subtle. Very pretty, actually. Now, I think that's as far as the transverse will go, because this is actually, or this is the fifth pull, and the paint is no longer transferring. But I'm pretty pleased with the result. In fact, I can show you close up. The uh, coloration and shading is very pretty. Very subtle. Okay. So this needs to be air dried just like the rest. And then I will be back to recap make some decisions. Okay, back from a short break and I had some time to go over my box of scraps and I found these. These are leftover stencils and I thought that they would work with this lightest ghost print. This is um, a fragment of a stencil. And this is also a piece of warm-up exercise done on tissue paper. I'm also doing an experiment instead of using um, Mod Podge, I'm using actually a matte, matte varnish or matte medium. And it's a lot more fluid. Uh, I'm hoping that it will dry invisible just like matte medium, I mean, just like uh, Mod Podge does.
no, I'm, I'm willing to experiment because I have to find these things out for myself. I don't have to take someone's word for it. Uh, the only way to find out is to try it out myself. It's uh, it's not as sticky as Mod Podge, but hopefully it will dry more invisible and more flat. So this is the one of the ghost prints. The uh, very last one, this is like the real bottom of the barrel left over. And I, I knew I couldn't go any further because uh, it doesn't transfer anymore. So anyways, this is the first collage. Here's a close-up. I do like the subtle textures done by the uh, transfer. And they're kind of softer colors. They're quiet colors, which I like, you know, for a change. Okay, so that is the first collage. Okay, back from a short break and I had some time to go over my box of scraps. And I found these. These are leftover stencils. And I thought that they would work with this lightest ghost print. This is um, a fragment of a stencil. And this is also a piece of warm-up exercise done on tissue paper. I'm also doing an experiment instead of using um, Mod Podge I'm using actually a matte, matte varnish or matte medium and it's a lot more fluid. Uh, I'm hoping that it will dry invisible just like matte medium. I mean just like uh, Mod Podge does. Now I'm, I'm willing to experiment because I have to find these things out for myself. I don't have to take someone's word for it. Uh, 
The only way to find out is to try it out myself. Okay. It's uh, it's not as sticky as Mod Podge, but hopefully it will dry more invisible and more flat so this is the one of the ghost prints the uh, very last one this is like the real bottom of the barrel left over and i i knew i couldn't go any further uh because it doesn't transfer anymore so anyways this is the first collage Here's a close-up. I do like the subtle textures done by the uh, transfer. And they're kind of softer colors. They're quiet colors which I like, you know, for a change. Okay, so that is the first collage. Okay, this is uh, ghost print number two which is uh, orange and copper and I found uh, once more some of my copy paper scraps and I will do my collage I added a little Mod Podge to the mix with the matte medium because I, I didn't find it as sticky just to give it a little more body. Okay, here's the now these pieces of uh, tissue, some of them are as is found in my box. So in a way they're like found objects. I just find them and Think that they will work without doing any changes to them. So this is the second collage. 
I like the uh, textures. It kind of like a uh, rusted metal. And it reminds me a lot of the uh, the walls that I see in the street. It's a close up of the, of the texture. Okay, that is collage number two. This is the third ghost print, which is a bright yellow.
here's a close-up of the texture it's pretty complex because it's a combination of several pools So that is the third collage. Here is the last one. This has a metallic blue.
So this is the last collage of the series. And here is a detail. This one almost has an aquatic theme because of the uh, metallic blue color. So I will recap with all these pieces once they're dry. Okay, everybody, this is a final recap of all these uh, collages. Uh, I'm pretty surprised that I could get this many pieces um, out of this printing session. Um, so here is the first piece, and here is an extreme close-up. This piece has more softer colors. Okay, so this is the second piece. Now this was the first pull with these circles. And I added the uh, ghost print with matte medium. Uh, I have mixed feelings about the matte medium. Uh, it is effective to some degree, but I find it's it's hard to get off your hands. Uh, that's one minus. And uh, I, I still prefer uh, Mod Podge as a glue. So I will keep experimenting and see how it goes. So this is second print. This is print number three, which has the orange and copper background. Here is the detail, and here is very close up, so you can see. The textures. So that is print number three. This is print number four. It's the yellow piece. Here is a clip. The detail. And finally, here is the last piece.
I do love the sheen of the metallic blue. Okay, so that is print number five. And once again, I would like to thank you for coming along for the ride. Um, this is a long video and uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for viewing and all you subscribers, I'm very grateful. If you would like to donate to my PayPal account to help with production costs, please do so. And I hope to see you next time.